uh, the creator of the virtual art department of Avatar, Mr. Rob Powers. He also heads up development of Lightwave at New Tech. Take it away, Rob. Hey, guys. Rob Powers here, and I just want to talk to you about some really exciting stuff. So typically in production, you know that oftentimes a director will have to go over, lean over the shoulder of an artist and say, can you move the camera for me with a mouse? Can you, you know, interact with the camera for me and control that? It's kind of not the way that filmmakers work. So we're in the visual medium. Anything that we can do to bring the visual interaction, the immersiveness to the process, the better. That's what happened in the virtual art department, as Don here knows that worked in that department on Avatar. Basically, taking that from where it was, which was in the previs stages, to something that goes from previs to now, it's viz. It's actually making the movie. It's not the process of thinking about it with artists clicking on my, a mice, you know, a mouse for you. It's basically they are actually um, handed the technology, and the director themselves can make the movie. So that's what we have, you know, that's what evolved on Avatar. That's what this this beautiful process brought, and I think this is amazing. So what you can see right now is the OpenGL display in Lightwave. It's always been really strong for OpenGL. You know, one of the reasons why we chose Lightwave on Avatar was because of its dealing with transparencies in OpenGL, all the strength of its OpenGL. But the cool thing I want to show you is now you basically can have a, <laughs> this beautiful system from InnerSense, which we used on Avatar, is in the interface. We sped up the OpenGL so much that you can actually control this, moving through the environment, you know, just like you're making a movie. So the cool thing about that is that the OpenGL technology is implemented in such a way we've not only, it's not a plug-in, InnerSense camera is not integrated as a plug-in, it's integrated into Lightwave 10. So the cool thing about this is, see the zoom button on the camera, I'm able to control the virtual camera in the same way. So all the buttons are mapped to certain technologies. You can actually make the film, and there's also a live button. If I'm, if I'm doing art direction and I want to get a still to send down the pipeline, you just take it off live and there's your still. So you, you can send that stuff out. That's really cool. And then you push the button again, you go back live. You zoom out. We, I mean, anybody who works with Lightwave, Lightwave 10 has upped the ante so much with, with OpenGL. It has sped it up so much that it's just like, it's incredible because there are other softwares that just specialize in this that aren't as fast as what we've got implemented in Lightwave 10. The cool thing that's really interesting, watch this. So you know traditionally, Lightwave's render engine has always been well respected. People win Emmys because of the work that's done with the Lightwave renderer that's built into the package. But let me show you something else that's cool. See, I've got the live camera. I'm basically going to push one button here on the camera that's mapped. And you're going to see now I am in Lightwave's renderer iterative. So basically, if I freeze now, I'm moving around. That's the renderer in real time with all the ray tracing and all of that. I can zoom out. I can zoom in. And the lights, you'll notice he's controlling the light. Watch the scene. The light's moving in the scene. So see that spotlight moving around? We've got two, he's, he's the uh, cinematographer, gaffer, I'm actually doing the camera. So when we freeze this now, you're going to see it iterates. And so you have the, all the beauty of Lightwave's renderer. you got that interactive interface. It's like driving me crazy. It's making me go crazy here as an artist. I love this. So you basically, yeah, you got your mouth open, right, Don? Yeah, he's freaking out. So the thing is, it's so cool about this is you're zooming out, you're controlling all this. That is the renderer. You see the transparencies, the ray tracing at all. When I, when I, you can either hold it steady or you can, you know, push and do it. And, and now art department, send it out. It's done. It's like, you know, down the pipeline. So and, and if you want to go back live and you want to get back into the OpenGL interface, you just push the button. And again, it will go. Let me, let me push the button correctly. There we go. We're back in OpenGL. I, I pushed it hard. I pushed it again twice. So you push the button properly if, I, if you're not, you know, on a lot of coffee like I am. And then it goes back to the different OpenGL display. Yeah. Ah, let me see. Quickly, push it quick, there we go. It's my fault. Okay, so operator error is not controlled by any uh, proprietary technology, so you gotta deal with that still. But this is so cool. I mean, this is, you know, the OpenGL interface in real time. You've got, you know, the lights being controlled. I mean, you know, we, we've sped up the GL SL shaders. We've got um, the, the VBOs have been like pumped up for, for uh, OpenGL. It's awesome. It's all tied into the camera. You can do scaling on this. The, you know, the real world cameras, the way that they work, you now can work in Lightwave's interface with that. So, you know, camera, camera in Lightwave has always been linked to real world cameras anyway. It's always been awesome. You have the, you know, the lenses are tied up. You have all of that. But now the OpenGL has been sped up in such a way that it makes it so iterative. And then you have the Lightwave renderer on top of it. You know how, that's awesome, right? So the other thing that's cool is that basically in Lightwave, 
you, we've, we've implemented some new um, transparency functions that I'm going to show you right now. This is a cool thing. So, you know, the camera is cool. It replicates the camera, but you can also do things with this, like scale up 300 feet, you know, scale down, all the things that you would do on top of what a real camera would do. So just to let you know, I just want to do this one more time because I love it. It's really fun. We're going to flip back over. Let's see. Oh, I didn't do it right. i got to push the button. We're going to go into VPR. This is our light wave renderer in real time. It's crazy. He's moving lights. He's doing all this stuff. And if I just freeze it, Oh, wow, it's the sexy light wave render I love. It's, it's, it's incredible. I can't think. The other thing I want to show you, just to make the point, because we had our special guest earlier that was here, we're going to go over to this other computer system now. And what I want to show you is this is over a million polys, a million and a half polys for this enterprise. And it looks like, you know, it's a really nice image, but the iterative renderer is so useful for visualization because look at this. We're moving around in real time. We're zooming. You can alter lights. You can you can it handle you can handle the textures. It's all Lightwave's renderer is right there to you know available to you, and it's an amazing way for artists to um, visualize things and and, and and work on the shots. You know you basically can noodle your surfaces. You can control the bump maps. You can tweak with the specularity. Um, you know it's it's just an amazing way to work, and this is so important to the process. But I have to I have to be honest here. This workstation that we're showing is about a, a, you know, 24 threads on a really powerful Intel processor, and we have a, a really great video graphics card. But we loaded the same thing on a three-year-old laptop, not that one, but one of the older Mac Pros, and it's still blazingly fast. So this technology is scalable. It's wonderful. The Intersense is scalable. You can start with their entry-level package, and you can scale it up as we did on Avatar. I sat probably for four years on Avatar with this mounted over me in the room. You know the room I was in. And I don't know if I can still have children, but it, you know, but it worked, and it was great. And we had a great time, and so whenever the art directors would come in, they could walk through the virtual sets as we showed, and um, it's an awesome process. So uh, we appreciate you guys coming. You know, the, the good news is you don't have to wait for this technology. If you want to have a part of Lightwave 10, all you have to do is join our hardcore group. Right now, there's a limited time until Q4 when we ship this product. You can join hardcore now. If you're a previous Lightwave owner, it's a $4.95 upgrade price if you're not. But if you buy in before it ships in Q4, you're going to be locked in at that price for a long time. If you wait, then you're going to be locked in at the higher price. You, no one can get into the hardcore after the hardcore has been closed, which is going to be moving lightweight 10 ships in Q4. So I just want to know, you know, we appreciate our hardcore community. They are our supporters. We love them, and we uh, want to bring tools to artists so that artists can make their their vision become real. And that's what Lightwave has always done. That's what New Tech does as a company, and that's why I love working for them. So thank you for watching. Thank you for coming. And uh, we appreciate you. Enjoy SIGGRAPH. <laughs>